Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats and silence your cell phones. The ceremony will begin in two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2023 University of Rhode Island Army ROTC Commissioning Ceremony. I'm Captain Fernandez, Assistant Professor of Military Science for the Kramer Sabres Battalion. Please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Please be seated. I would like to recognize our distinguished guests with us here today. Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos, University of Rhode Island President Dr. Mark B. Parlange and his wife Mary B. Parlange. Dean Jen Jensen, Dean of the Students at Salve Regina University. Sean Edmund Rogers, Vice President of Community Equity and Diversity. Colonel Retired John Petrella. Colonel Retired Bill Babcock, Colonel Retired Tom Heaney, Bob Flynn, Director of the Military and Veterans Education at University of Rhode Island, and Lieutenant Colonel Retired Peterson and his wife. At this time, I would like to welcome and invite University of Rhode Island President Dr. Mark B. Parlange to the stage. So, well, good morning, everyone. It's, it's lovely to see all of you here. I have to say, you all look fantastic uh, this morning, and it would be lovely if we have this weather on Saturday morning, as it was just mentioned. Uh, so we're, we're lighting candles and hoping for the best. But uh, just a warm welcome. I, I'd like to begin by, you know, first of all, acknowledging all uh, the people that have really brought our students to this point, and I would especially like to acknowledge all the families and friends, so let's, maybe we can warmly welcome you and thank you. <laughs> so we've had, uh, I've had the pleasure of being uh, president at the University of Rhode Island now for two years, and as I've told many people, it's the best job in the world. And it's really because of the people that are the, at the university. And the ROTC students are no exception. And over the last two years, I've gotten to know them at a, at a personal level. And I, for those of you who are not aware, they show up at 5.30 in the morning to do training every day. And then they go on. And then they're students. And then they do lots of other training. You see them on the weekends. And, it's just your dedication, your commitment, your excellence, the scholarship, and just uh, community. You are good people, and as wonderful human beings, you really have represented the best of the University of Rhode Island, uh, Salve Regina, and I, I feel like I'm missing one more. 
Roger Williams, uh, apologies. Uh, and it's, it's really great that the three schools have come together. And so that's, uh, it's, it's just a wonderful day and a wonderful ceremony. Look, I would like to also recommend you are always uh, graduates of the universities, and so stay connected with your three schools. Uh, continue to uh, come back and uh, celebrate with us, and I just want to say warm congratulations on this very special occasion. I've been looking forward to this uh, this week, so thank you so much. The Reserve Officer Training Corps, or ROTC program, is that prepares young adults to become officers in the U.S. military. Cadets strive not only to uphold, but push past rigorous standards of discipline and duty. Prior to commissioning as officers, it is necessary to remember the cadet creed. As tradition in recent years, such creed has been recited by a cadet in their freshman year of the program. Such honor is granted to an MS-1 that has shown immense leadership capabilities, as well as performing above and beyond their first year in the program. Cadet Dekufa, please come forward and state the cadet creed. Thank you, Cadet Takufa. At this time, I would like to introduce the Professor of Military Science for Kramer Sabres Battalion, Lieutenant Colonel Tad Grenai. Lieutenant Governor Matos, President and Miss, Mrs. Parlange, Dean Jensen, Colonel Petrala, and the entire alumni that are here. Hello, Jane Stitch, hello. Most importantly, though, welcome to families and friends of these amazing soon-to-be second lieutenants. Um, in years past, I've had this kind of speech put together. This year, I decided that I, I wasn't going to do that um, because at some level, it's just they deserve some really a personal touch. This is a really, to me, it's my third year. Um, this is a special group. They've been here the entire time that I've been here, so I've, I've gotten to know these soon-to-be second lieutenants very, on a, at a personal level. Um, so this is, it's, although this is an amazing day, it's actually, you know, I've kind of regretted coming up here to talk about this. Um, the cadre and I have given them lots of advice through the, uh, through the years, and in general they take it, or at least I think they take it. Um, and so a couple, I'm just to say a couple of words to them, just as a few reminders, um, but I know that they already know a lot of these things, so it's not something they're, that they haven't heard before, and there's nothing necessarily profound about it. Um, so I'll give you these four pieces of advice. Maintain your humility. Nobody cares about how many touchdowns you scored in high school, or for that matter, if you played football in college. No one cares. What, you care, what matters is what you learned from those, those experiences and apply them in real life. Don't fall for the trap of arrogance. Give credit to your subordinates and take responsibility for yours and their failures. Hard work. There's way too many people in the world that have all the talent in the world, but they get beaten out by people with, that, that dedicate themselves to hard work. You, as long as you work hard all the time, everything will work out just fine. Positive attitude. They don't write books about how to be negative, but people make millions of dollars writing about how to succeed in business and in life, and every one of them talks about a positive attitude. 
Positive attitudes are contagious, but so is negativity. Don't fall for that trap. Your lieutenant, or I'm sorry, your soldiers are going to take on your, your personality. So you might as well set a good example with a positive attitude. Things are not always going to be perfect. Maintain positive attitude. Lastly, enjoy yourself. There is not one, not one senior leader in the Army that is not envious of this trail you're about to set on. Not one, including this one. I've been honored to be your professor, professor of military science, and we'll miss you. And thanks for letting us be part of their lives, family. So give yourselves a round of applause for that. Thank you. Now I have the honor of introducing today's guest speaker. Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos was born in the province of Bajarona in the Dominican Republic. In April 1994, she emigrated to the United States. She's a proud graduate of Rhode Island College where she earned a BA in Communications and Public Relations in May of 20, uh, 2001. Before she was appointed Lieutenant Governor, she served on the Providence City Council from uh, January 2011 until April of 2021. Sabina Matos was appointed as the 70th Lieutenant Governor of Rhode Island on April 14th, 2021. In November 2022, she, she won re-election as Rhode Island's current Lieutenant Governor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos. Good morning. Lieutenant Colonel um, Granny, that was beautiful. It's really hard to follow that. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this honor to be here, to, here today to congratulate you on this special day. I want to th thank um, President Paul Lange and his wife, Mary. It has been such a pleasure to work with you and to see the work that you're doing here in the college. And I'm looking forward now to being even more engaged with my son joining URI next year. So you're going to see a lot more of me. I'm going to be more here. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to say congratulations and to thank you for what you do. I had a special connection for some of you, especially the ones from the other colleges, may not know that I did try to do exercise with the cadet here two years ago. And it's something that is um, still in my memory because my body reminded me for the next three weeks that I, I don't have the skills that they have. And it has been so uh, such a pleasure to work with all of you in to see your growth and to see your leadership and to see how you're progressing. I'm so proud and so honored on behalf of the state of Rhode Island to say congratulations. I also want to say that one of the things that I admire as someone that um, didn't grow up in the United States, I came here when I was 20 years old without knowing the language, and I have shared with, the, with you, some of you, this before, but I'm always grateful to the work that you do, the work that our military does, because that's what keeps our country so wonderful. I have the experience of growing outside of the, of, outside of the United States in the Dominican Republic, and I'm very connected to things that are happening outside of the, of the United States, especially in Latin American countries. And what we have in this country is so unique, and sometimes we forget about it. And it's so unique because it's individuals like yourself that raise your hand and says, me, I'll be there. I'll be there to be the defender of this constitution. I'd be there to be the defender of this nation. And you do it in a way with so much respect for one another and for respect for the institution. That's what keeps our nation together, the respect for one another and the respect for our institution. And that is what you do. One of the things that I'm the most amazed and proud to see, especially with our military, is the diversity that you have in your ranks and the diversity that you have in your leadership. You should be a model for all of us to emulate in every other um, department and agency um, within the state and also within the country. 
I wish we can all, and I think I shared this before, I wish we all can go into military school and learn the basic uh, lessons on leadership and to caring for one another and respecting one another. Understanding that as someone that is part of the team, regardless of the position that they are, they're crucial to the mission. And the mission cannot be accomplished if all of us are not following our part and doing our part. I'm so impressed with the work that you do. And it's one of the biggest satisfactions that I get to work in the Office of Lieutenant Governor is doing the work that we do for our military families, our veterans, and our um, men's and women's in service. Every time that we get together to send care packages to our military members that are stationed outside of, uh, of Rhode Island, could be in the United States or could be in the other part of the world, those moments working with the Blue Stars families, the Blue Star mom, putting together those care packages to make sure that you, all of you, when you are away from Rhode Island, you get a package from us. That probably may have some Dell lemonade, or what I hear, some Dunkin' Donut coffee, which will make you the most popular person, right? But what we want to do is to send you a little bit of Rhode Island, remind you that you have people here thinking of you, grateful for what you're doing, I'm sharing on you and sending you a piece of Rhode Island so you remember that we're here for you. The work that we have been doing to make sure that when, you're, when you are deployed, our militaries are deployed and their families stay here, working with uh, the military, military relief fund to ensure that we fundraise uh, and have resources available to assist a family that may be in need. It could be um, a car that broke down. It could be paying for rent, uh, make it, uh, pay for the mortgage one month. Those are the things how we're trying our best to meet up to our responsibility and to make sure that your family is taken care for while you're serving our nation. Those are the moments that I feel give me so much satisfaction because as I told you before, the things that happen in this nation doesn't happen everywhere. For someone to come and speak the language and be able to represent my community in the state of Rhode Island as a lieutenant governor, there are not that many places in the, in the world where you can find us something like that to happen. And that happened in this country because this is unique to this nation and it's thanks so much to your work and your sacrifice. I'm so honored to be here with all of you today to be able to say congratulations and to let you know how proud the state of Rhode Island is of your accomplishment. For those of you that are gonna go away, know that we're gonna be here waiting for you. We need your leadership, we want you to come back, and we want you to be part of Rhode Island forever. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to say congratulations, it's truly a pleasure for me. Thank you. On behalf of the URI ROTC program, we would like to present a gift to Lieutenant Governor Matos to thank her for her support of the Kramer Sabres Battalion and being the guest speaker of our event. Will the cadets to be commissioned please stand? Our cadets are now ready to join the Army Officer Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the reading of the commissioning order. By the order of the President of the United States, to all who shall see these officer candidates before you, having successfully fulfilled the requirements prescribed for the United States Army Reserve Officer Training Corps, are upon execution of their oath of office, appointed commission officers in the United States Army, effective 18 May, 2023, signed the Honorable Christine Warmoth, Secretary of the Army. Please be seated. We will now attach the cadets rank to their uniform. Friends and family are welcome to come forward and take pictures located at the designated marked spot as shown by Cadet Barricachea. 
Friends and family, taking part in the pinning process, please enter through your left and my right of the stage. Earning the Distinguished Military Graduate Honors Title, Second Lieutenant Patrick Lane, Branch, Active Duty Armor. His gold bar will now be pinned by his parents, Richard and Lisa Lane. Second Lieutenant Megan Brigham, Branch Medical Service Corps into the Connecticut National Guard. Her gold bar will now be pinned by her parents, Ned and Mary Brigham. Second Lieutenant Catherine Biswicki, Branch Medical Service Corps into the Army Reserves. Her gold bar will now be pinned by her parents, Daniel and Lisa Biswicki. Second Lieutenant Madison Christiana, Branch Medical Service Corps, into the North Carolina National Guard. Her gold bar will now be pinned by her parents, Russell and Amy Christiana.
Second Lieutenant Christian Detuza branched ordinance into the Rhode Island National Guard. His gold bar will now be pinned by his father, Kenneth, his mother, Jennifer, and brother, Nicholas Detuza. Second Lieutenant Jack Eustace, Branch Active Duty Infantry. His gold bar will now be pinned by his parents, Maureen and William Eustace. Second Lieutenant David Falano branched aviation into the Connecticut National Guard. His gold bar will now be placed pinned by his brothers, Ayo and Favor Falano.
Second Lieutenant James Coaster, Branch Active Duty Infantry. His gold bar will now be pinned by his grandfather, James Coaster, and father, Jim Coaster. Second Lieutenant Joseph Morrissey, Branch Active Duty Military Intelligence, with a branch detail into the infantry. His gold bar will now be pinned by his parents, Joseph and Christine Morrissey. Second Lieutenant Chantel Rosario, Branch Quartermaster, into the Massachusetts National Guard. Her gold bar will now be pinned by her parents, Jose Rosario and Ingrid De Los Santos.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the oath of office. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States, in the grade of second lieutenant, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I, will, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I'm about to enter. So help me God. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the newest Sec Lieutenants of the United States Army. Please give them a round of applause. <clears throat> now is the time for the new officers to conduct their first salute. By custom and tradition in the Army, the newly commissioned second lieutenant will present a silver dollar to the first NCO who renders them a ceremonial first salute. The silver dollar commemorates the occasion and seals the critical bond of trust that exists between the NCO and officer corps. As we call your name, please come forward to center stage to receive your salute as a newly commissioned second lieutenant. If you are rendering the first salute, please come to the stage as you, can, as you hear the newly commissioned second lieutenant's name called. Second Lieutenant Patrick Lane, will exchange his first salute with Petty Officer 3rd Class Del Damaris. Second Lieutenant Megan Brigham will exchange her first salute with Staff Sergeant Vance Dewey. Second Lieutenant Catherine Biswicki will exchange her first salute with Staff Sergeant Vance Dewey.
Second Lieutenant Madison Christiana will exchange her first salute with Sergeant Thomas Christiana. Second Lieutenant Christian Detuza will exchange his first salute with Staff Sergeant Vance Dewey. Second Lieutenant Jack Eustace will exchange his first salute with Sergeant First Class Jeffrey Holomuski. Second Lieutenant David Falano will exchange his first salute with Staff Sergeant Timothy Marcotte. Second Lieutenant James Coaster will exchange his first salute with Staff Sergeant Vance Dewey. Second Lieutenant Joseph Morrissey will exchange his first salute with Staff Sergeant Vance Dewey. Second Lieutenant Chantel Rosario will exchange her first salute with Sergeant Tracy Santos. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join in the singing of the Army song. The lyrics of the song can be found on the back of the page program.
This concludes our ceremony. Enjoy your weekend and best of luck to the newest second commissioned second lieutenants in the United States Army.